your life? Yeah. <sighs> What's the name of the program? <laughs> oh. The Gemini Full Moon. The 1212 Gemini Full Moon. Okay, well, welcome to the Gemini 12-12 full moon. This is Ellie Tana Amin and Athena Starseed, and we're going to start out with an um, opening invocation. Hi, welcome, Facebook. <laughs> uh, so, everybody, I want you to take a nice, deep breath and close your eyes and inhale. And imagine the four archangels on the corners of this temple. Archangel. Thank you. 
Here's your part. I love you, beloved. I love you, beloved. I love you, beloved. I love you. I love you, beloved. I love you, beloved. I love you, beloved. I love you. You guys keep going. I love you, beloved. I love you, beloved. I love you, beloved. I love you. Keep going. I love you. We are going to a sacred place. We are now in sacred space. We are living in a state of grace. We are loving in a sacred grave. Y'all sing. I love you, beloved. I love you, beloved. I love you, beloved. I love you. To the minerals. I love you.
Awesome. Give her a round of applause to <laughs> Athena Star Body Band. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. But that's music, though. And music is the what? Seventh level of yoga. A lot of people don't recognize that. But we are, if everything is vibration, that means everything is given off a sound. So therefore, if the sound is coming off the instrument good, it's making a good music so everything is dancing and everything is rhythm and everything is in harmony. However, if the music, if the band is playing good and somebody got their instrument, da -da 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 -da, and somebody, ah, get rid of them. <laughs> They're not playing good into the orchestra. So when you're dealing with a breatharian journey, now first of all, breatharianism is to eat very little or none at all. When we say very little, that means that they have picked up a skill where they can pick something up and detach themselves from it and put it down. The average human being can't do that without having problems. Uh-oh. This is a skill that one can learn. Now, why would somebody want to eat something if they don't need to? Because we are used to saying that we are spirits having a human experience. So you are here experiencing life. But somewhere along the line, the human being got trapped here through thought and idea. And now everybody's on a survival level. So somebody put into the human's brain that if you don't eat, you die. That's been going on for a long time. But breatharianism always been here. It just went into what? Esoteric places. A small group of people had or the knowledge was hidden. But now it's making a resurface like never before. And it ain't spooky no more just for the mystic up on the mountain. You're going to find out it's nothing but a holistic lifestyle. Now holistic means whole. Everything coming together. Not no separate. You are a whole, total being. There's many forces that's taking part in order for us to be alive. So the practitioner of this art is going to start living a whole life. Usually when people hear of breatharianism, they just want to leave the food part alone. And they have run into problems because all they're doing is fasting. Fasting is temporary. But a holistic lifestyle, you're being nourished, not only the physical body, you're being nourished, nourished from the mind. You're being nourished from what? What you breathing? You're being nourished from your social life, people around you? Because some people will drain you from energy, and that's nourishment. Now, I want you to read that one part I gave you. And listen at this. Now, this is a book. Who is that from? This is from Hilton Otima, who wrote Man's Higher Consciousness. And what book is that? The Ancient? Ancient Secret of Personal Power. Ancient Secret of Personal Power. Now, we listen to these two. And I got this from my one sister, way in London. So that shows you knowledge ain't hidden. You way in London and you got that information. Now you're here in America and we all sharing the same information. That means it ain't hidden from humanity no more. It don't matter where you at. If you want to get the knowledge, you can now, here we go. Now, read those chapters right there. Respiration is the primal function of the organism. Respiration, now I'm going to be cutting in a little bit. Respiration is the primal what? Function of the organism. Primal function of the organism. All right. All other functions are secondary and designed to keep the body fit to perform respiration. And all other uh, functions are secondary. All right, keep going. The lungs are definitely designed for and adapted to their work. The stomach is simply an enlargement of the alimentary canal and nothing more. They say the stomach is nothing but an enlargement of the elementary canal and nothing more. The lungs are specific organs. The largest by far in the body, filling the thorax from collar bone to lower most ribs and from sternum in front to the sp in front to spine and back. So the lungs is one of the biggest organs in the body, you know, besides the skin. 
So it has great significance. Let's see what it's about. They are strictly the organs of life. They are strictly the organs of life. Because the three treasures of life is what? Eating, drinking, and breathing. And you'll die without quicker without breathing than you will eating or drinking. Not eating or drinking. So what's the number one treasure? Let's see what they say. When we stop breathing, we stop living. When we stop breathing, we stop living. And when man dies, he goes gasping for air. And when man dies, he goes gasping for air. And I was just in Ohio with a friend I grew up with, and their mother died. And they said, this is what they said out their mouth, we stuck with her till the last breath. When the breath was gone, it was over with. So breath is our thing. Uh-oh. Man cannot die as long as he can breathe. Man cannot die as long as he can breathe. Here we go. In the beginning of man on the earth plane, air was his only need that was external to the kingdom within. Now listen at this. In the beginning of man, what they saying? Air was all he needed, basically. From the, from, in the external to the kingdom within. From the external, from the kingdom within. Because your lungs, they are so important, you breathe without even thinking about it. That's how important it is. You ain't sitting up here, breathe, breathe, you know, thinking about it. I'm hungry for air. I'm hungry for air. Do it naturally. Now, they say from the beginning of man, now keep in mind in the scriptures, they start out with this Adam character, all right? Now, that ain't got nothing to do with that's the first man on the planet. We don't have to go over there with that thought. Usually when somebody starts with something, they're just going to a place of a person who probably did something differently. Because that means he had a mother and father. It's sort of like if you go to a rich family. Let's say the Rockefellers. They probably have a picture of the person who started that dynasty. You understand? He had a mother and father, but they ain't got him up there. Because the picture they got there is the one who started out with the money who changed the generation's lives. So Adam that they're talking about, they ain't talking about no first man or first woman on the planet. It's just talking about somebody who did something differently. Another type of human being. Uh-oh, here we go. So we can nip that in the bud. <laughs> uh, and all his other needs rose from unnatural desires that created vital adjustment. So all his other needs was unnatural desires. So that means when we say breatharianism, is to eat very little or none at all. Now, his natural state, he don't have to eat food. He eat air. So if he do eat, it's unnatural. An unnatural desire. Uh-oh. I'm just saying. Let's go with it. <laughs> and the air man needed was free and abundant, required for its possession, no other label than that of breathing. Oh, man, did they say that? The air is free, basically. Now they charge you for air conditioning, at least, but still. <laughs> they could charge you for breath, they would. <laughs> but it's free. Oh, man. That's why I got so much money. Somebody asked me one time, well, how you do all that traveling? I don't eat. You could do a lot of traveling if you didn't eat. That's something, ain't it? You spend a lot of money eating. Think about it one day. Just if you were to do $5 a day, that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. And I'm just saying, I'm just trying to be nice. The average person eats, what, three meals a day. And it's about, it's over $5 a pop only if you go to McDonald's. Easy. Right. You dropping 100 or something. We ain't even talk about it if you got children and stuff. You got to feed the whole family. You in slavery. Especially if you know that this is free. Go ahead. Oh, man. This means that breatharianism is a physical perfection. That means that breatharianism is a physical perfection. Straight up. It equals what? Perfection. Why is that? Because it, for you to even be here in a physical realm walking around, that means you had to meet the requirements of universal laws. Mm -hmm. And everything is perfect. So the human being must what? Become an awareness that they're perfect for you to even be alive. But the average person got low self-esteem. Ain't nobody perfect. I am. That's why I'm a breatharian. Uh-oh, perfect God. Perfect thought process. That's what we're coming into. Perfection. All right, let's go for it. The Bible shows that man came into earthly existence a breatharian. 
So the Bible even saying that man came in earthly existence of breath in. Now, we ain't getting religious about it, but they do start out with what? God breathed into Adam and he became a living soul. So if there's any truth in the Bible, that must be it then. <laughs> Uh-oh. Quran say the same thing. If there's any truth, we don't need the rest of the book. All we need is that scripture right there. All right, let's go. Let's go with it. The breath of life supplied all the requirements of his organism. So nothing, the, oh, go ahead. Nothing else was lacking and nothing else was needed. So the breath of life gave him everything he needed. Nothing was lacking and nothing else was needed. This is heavy, ain't it? The breath of life. That's why I used to cut, say on my what Facebook thing, I'm the son of Adam, but people can't catch it. What did that mean? What did that mean? I'm living off the breath of life. Nothing else was needed. That's why I'm free. Let's go with it. Uh-oh. The air he breathed and nothing more sustained his organism, and he lived for centuries. That was the golden age of man. So the air he breathed was all he needed, and that was the golden age of man. This ain't the golden age. This is the dark ages. It, it got to be. Uh-oh, if we go in accordance to that, that don't mean we got to believe it. But I do. And there's others who believe it. And we're breathing it every day. But now we got to go through a process. See, when you first hear breatharianism, it's scary. When I first heard it, I said, what? But at the same time, when I looked at it, and I was already in a holistic lifestyle, it didn't intimidate me no more. You got to look at it, study it. Get the theoretical knowledge, and then you understand that there's a method on how to do it. Uh-oh. Once you understand your energy being, your light being, and there's not a physical physicist or a theoretical physicist, whatever you want to call them, that will not say you're not a light being. Everything is energy. Everything. And we got energy channels in our body. And now they're saying we got an electric magnetic field. All physical matter does. You live in an electrical universe. Your thoughts is electrical. So what's the problem now? We're in an age where we got this knowledge now. Now we got to figure out on how to put this together to transform yourself so you can be free and stop being a slave. Oh, man, did we say that? Yeah, we did. Now, here we are on a Gemini 12-12 full moon. What does that mean and what does that got to do with being a breatharian? It got a lot to do with it. Now, Oliver, you just said something real significant when you got here. How you started fasting on full moons. That's something, ain't it? So therefore, there's set times and cycles that we're under. And that's what the human being got to become in tune with. That's why he's perfect, but he lost the knowledge of how the cosmos, the energies are affecting us. Those are the subtle forces. Those are the alien forces that's coming off planet that is affecting everybody, but if you're ignorant to them, you're cut off from it. You don't know how to use it. Now the Gemini full moon, listen at this. What is a Gemini in astrology? It's an air sign. Now did we just say man live off the air? So that means it must be activating something in your body that can make this time period easy to be a breath What's up? I think also represent the lungs. What, say again? I think Gemini also represents the lungs. It also represents the lungs. It's twins. One thing is the what? The air, and it represents the physical lungs. I think so. Lungs are the arms, but this part. And I think you're right. It's the two twins. The two twins. Yep. It represents the lungs. And the Gemini on this time period, now this makes it a good one. Now, how do they say this? This is the last full moon of the decade. Yes. The last full moon of the decade. Now, there's a saying that says that a day goes quick, but a decade goes fast. So a lot of people's lives are being procrastinated. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, a decade then went past. So you could have made some significance. Because some people will say, well, how long does it take to become a breatharian? And if I was to tell them it takes 10 years, they wouldn't do it. Because 10 years seem like a long time. But when 10 years is up, 
Don't we say, man, that 10 years went quick. It was just yesterday, 10 years ago, that I was doing this and that. So now you just got to begin. That's the process. Don't worry about when you're going to become a brethren, when you're going to make a transition to live off the air. But if you don't, 10 years is going to be gone. I've been on the journey two decades. Uh-oh. Two, 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 what, 20 years. And 20 years ago, where was I? It was just like it was yesterday. It was. Oh, man. It went just that fast. Just that fast. A lot of things happened in that time period. Some people ain't here no more with us. I made all these transitions. I went from a baby breath in to a teenage breath in to an adult breath in. The baby was, I used to fall down a lot, <coughs> trying to walk. Don't know I could never break through free. I used to love avocados. Now I don't like avocados. Now why don't I don't like them all of a sudden? I don't like the way it make me feel. It don't go with the organism. I'm an air being now. I'm not an earth being no more. Transition. I got everything I need. Whoa. This isn't far-fetched. So if you're in any type of religion, we ain't talking about religion. All religious books is talking about the same thing. That atom got what? The breath of life in them. And don't science say everything is made of atoms? Uh-oh. So is that the same thing? It could be. Atoms are sustained by energy. That's why they created a nuclear bomb, so they split the atom. Uh-oh, here we go now. That's a lot of power. And we're made up of atoms. So you just have to recognize who you are and start getting this energy flowing through you. Lighten up the diet so you can transform yourself. Of course you can do it. That's your birthright. No, that, no, that ain't your birthright. We talked about that. Economic freedom is your birthright. Economic freedom is your birthright. Now, why would we say economic freedom is your birthright? Now, listen at that now. Because <laughs> all natural animals is economically free. That makes sense, don't it? So if you become an air animal, you're economically free. I ain't got to go buy no food. That's slavery. I ain't scared to sleep outside. I'll be in the air. That's my lifeline. So what? I don't need to go buy no house. Don't care. But when you got those desires of unnatural things, now you need to go get a job and go do all that other stuff. You're in bondage. Oh, did I say that? We shoot straight from the hip, ain't we? That's why they say health is your wealth. And the eight breath theory is on perfection. You should be perfect to have perfect health. High blood pressure, liver ailments, strokes, diabetes, all of that right there is preventable diseases that's in this system. And that's from food. Straight up. Obesity, stagnation, that's from food. That's bondage again. On a death frequency. We might as well go ahead and say it. We're shooting straight from the hip now. Because Adam has returned. The consciousness. I got to talk like that. What else am I supposed to say? Lie about it? So the great lie is it that I'm, that I'm not eating. The great lie if I was to say, yeah, y'all go ahead and eat. That's the truth. No, that won't, that won't be the truth. Everybody, my brothers and sisters, y'all air beings by your nature. Oh, man. Somebody got to say it. <laughs> Whoa. So the Gemini full moon. The last moon of the decade, the last full moon. Now, when people think about breatharianism, you know what they usually call me about? Sun gazing. Everybody always talk about the sun. But the sun ain't the full picture. Then we just talk about this a holistic lifestyle, but where the moon at? Nobody's talk con connecting the moon with being a breatharian. I ain't see one person do that. So that means that they're not thinking on completion. The moon has a lot of power. But I can see why it got cut off. Because it's a suppression of the feminine energy. Did I say that? Yeah, I did. 
the female been suppressed. So of course they cut the moon out of having power. It don't mean nothing. And the moon is the start of the process. Whoa, did I say that? It ain't the sun. It's the moon. It's the one that activates the melatonin in the body. Now what is melatonin? Melatonin comes from your pineal gland in your brain. And it is activated from dark cycles at night. When it's dark. And what do melatonin do? It is a hormone that goes in your bloodstream to regenerate you. And it also keeps your, let me say this word right, circadian cycle. You're, you are on, you're like a walking clock with the cosmos. So it keeps the cycles for you to be healthy. But if it gets suppressed, you don't know it works for you. You ain't going to be complete. The sun and the moon are both doing something for the body. But everybody just focused on the sun. Oh, man, did I say that? Yeah, you need both cycles to make you complete, to make you whole. Not just the one, everybody's sun gazing. And then, let me show you what else will hurt you. And then at night, we already built the light, right? That UV light or whatever light. It got the lights on all night long. Suppressing. The melatonin. Hurting yourself again. Many people sick because of the light on all night. We might as well go say it. You need some darkness so that melatonin could go out of your body to heal you. To rejuvenate you. And you shouldn't be eating at night either. When the sun goes down, that means what? It's another energy that took place now. It's the feminine energy. And it's needed to make the organism whole. Or you ain't going to see these levels. You got to respect creation, which is respecting yourself. The set times and cycles. Whoa, is we saying this? Man. Now, there's something else I want you to read. Number one. All right, what is this? We got to get into this. Yeah, number one on that. Now, this is why they say the moon represents the female. Now, that's what that word magnetism come from and also Mary Magdalene in the scriptures. It deals with the moon frequency. Now read that on the moon nut number one. Uh, moon goddess symbol that represents spiritual aspects of femininity, uh, intuition. All right, stop right there. It's a moon goddess symbol that represents intuition. That's how I like spirituality too. All right, right there. Now keep going. Intuition. Psychic, uh, psychic abilities. Psychic abilities. Uh, Stop right there. So psychic abilities. Everybody's psychic, but if you want to upgrade your psychic abilities, it goes with the moon energy, not with the sun. The sun is burning stuff. The moon. We're gonna see why the moon deals with this. All right, let's keep reading. Mm -hmm. Creativity and wisdom. Creativity and wisdom. Now keep in mind that the right side of the brain is the female. The left side is the male. The left side deals with logic. The right side deals with creativity. So if we want to crack open that other side of us because there's another channel open when nighttime comes in the body. In yoga, they'll tell you that. Uh-oh. Now, listen at this. Let's get into... Oh, we got to make this make sense. There's something else I want you to read to show you how important this is. Now, that's dealing with mysticism. Now, mysticism, y'all heard of that word? Mm -hmm. That sounds spooky, don't it? But when you're on this path of spirituality, let's kick off that word spirituality for a minute. When you're on this path of working with energy, uh-oh, here we go. You are now getting into learning about the subtle forces. A breatharian, what makes them different than the average person is they're more skilled at working with energy. Energy's coming off the ground, hitting everybody. But I know how to get the energy from the ground. I know what it's doing. Hmm. Cosmic energy is hitting everybody. But a breatharian has worked on themselves through meditation so the cosmic energies can come straight through the body without no blockages. That's all. But the average person, oh, my back hurt. 
Oh, I got a pain here. Those are blockages that you put there, but you can remove them. No, my body is not hurting. I've removed them. And your body is made of carbon. Carbon is a good conductor of energy. Uh-oh. So the human being is being destroyed for lack of knowledge and self-destruction. Not understanding the power of the subtle forces. Oh, man, is this making sense? Oh, let's go deeper. So now, there's, they got this word mysticism. Now, the reason why they use that word mysticism is sort of like, see, in esoteric circles, they use words, but they have meaning to them. So it's like there's a night where there's a mist out. And a mist or sort of like a fog. You can't hardly see at night or what's in front of you. But if there's a light on in the mist, you can see the light in the mist. So a person who's a seeker, they will go always try to seek the light even though they can't see in front of them. But they will always go seek the light. They'll take that chance. But another person, they won't take that chance because they might be already comfortable, right? They, even though they see the light out there, they know that there's a journey getting to that light. So they're not going to take that chance. I'd rather stay where I'm comfortable, even though it could be hurting me. That's the difference. Oh, does that make a sense? They're going to take the chance to go through the mist. They could trip over something. It's dark. They can't see in front of them. But what they see is the light. And they're always going to be seeking the light for another change. That's the difference. Some people's hungry for knowledge. Some ain't. They're comfortable where they at. I didn't have to become a breatharian. I was hungry. <laughs> hungry for some air. <laughs> I wanted to breathe. <laughs> I wanted to get out of slavery. <laughs> My job was bad, too. We got good medical benefits. And I said, well, why can't I help myself? I, already, I just did. I don't need you. That's what happened. And some people keeping their jobs because they saying they got good medical. And all you got to do is go heal yourself. Oh, man, did we say that? Damn bondage. Oh, man. Now, so they got that word mysticism. Let's look at it. Look at that definition and see what it's talking about. Because when you are in the Brethren journey, you're becoming a mystic. Belief that union with or absorption into the uh, deity or the absolute. Ah, oh, listen at that. Stop right there. Read that one more time slowly. Belief that it's, it's a belief that what? Union with. Union with. Now that union word sounds familiar, don't it? Yoga. Yoga means you. Union with. It's a belief that you're going to get union with. And also religion comes from the word regulare in Latin. That means union with. So you're going to, you got a belief that you're going to have a union with. Keep reading. Or absorption. Or absorption. You're going to come so unionized with it, you're going to absorb yourself into it. Become one with it. Into the deity. Into the deity. It don't need no name of God. But it's going to become one with something that's greater than it was. All right, let's keep going. Or the absolute. Or the absolute. That means everything, the all. You're going to become one with something. Now keep reading. Of the spiritual apprehension of knowledge. Or the spiritual apprehension of knowledge. It could be some knowledge. You're going to become one with it. You're not going to be a hypocrite. Whoa. In, in necessity? And it's a necessity. You remember I said nature works from the need. If you ain't got no need, it ain't going to become one with you. The need have to be created. All right. To the intellect. To the intellect. Oh, man. Any more? May he attain through contemplation and self Listen at this. surrender. And you can achieve it through contemplating, contemplation and self-surrender. 
That's how you absorb yourself with the forces. Through contemplation and absorption. Ain't that what it's saying? You become a one with it. There ain't no in-between. So when I take on the sun energy in the daytime, we was in the sun today. I was one with it. It's feeding me. It's nourishing me. It ain't cut off no more. What was cutting it off before is when I was eating. But I slowly became one with it. But now we at nighttime. The sun ain't out now, is it? Do I look like I'm eating now like the sun keep me alive? The moon is doing something. It opened up the cooling channels. You'll learn out of yoga. There's the heat channels that the sun activates because your pineal gland gets all serotonin. So it's working with another type of channel. When the moon come out, since you're connected with the forces, it opens up the cooling channels and the melatonin. They don't go down the same channels. Oh, did we say that? They got to come together. That's the union with. So you got to respect the daytime just like the night because you're part of both of them. That's the cycles you under. We under set times and cycles with creation. There ain't no in between. Oh, man. This is getting good, ain't it? So you're becoming a mystic. So that's why even though it's a full moon to everybody, some people don't know what the significance is. But a person who's in a know that got knowledge, this is a good time to do a ritual. This is a good time to, for meditation. This is a good time to suck in that energy. It is. Because it's high. Now why is it high? Now in the medical profession or science, They'll say, well, there's no scientific thing to saying that the moon actually affects us. They'll say that on one level. But we all know they'll come back and say, well, but the moon do affect the tides and the waves and the ocean. Now, that's powerful, ain't it? And ain't we made of mostly water? So somebody could drift like it ain't affecting you. That don't even make sense, do it? We are mostly water. What? The world is what? 70% mostly water, and we are too. So if it could affect the tides and the waves out in the ocean, it's affecting us also. That don't even make sense. Oh, man. Big time. And those people who's in different uh, jobs out there, whether if it's in a medical profession or whatever, they'll tell you, just from their experience, yeah, it seems like on a full moon a lot more do happen. And even me, myself, throughout my life, I know that things, sometimes things be going a certain way. I say, it must be a full moon. Yep. I can tell by people's behavior. There's more accidents. The A&E &E in hospitals are... Yeah. Very alive. Accidents, and all that stuff. Very alive on the full moon. So the moon is affecting us. So when you're a mystic, or when you're on a path, and you know that this has great power, you start taking advantage of that power. You start taking advantage. That's what we're doing. A breatharian is just taking advantage of the energies that's available to them. You breathe every day, but there's a thing called pranayama, breath work, breath exercises. And I told them in this group one day, if you did breath exercises every day, you would become very energetically powerful. You would. Why wouldn't you? You'll heal yourself. You'll break up blockages. You'll be energetically powerful. But as I told that group, did any of them do it? I don't know. But I doubt it. They're too busy chasing materialism. Mm -hmm. Outside of themselves. Or they don't see the significance what type of power it gives them. Because they're too busy looking at their house. The, the mortgages do. They slaves. My girlfriend might not like me because she likes to go to Red Lobster. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I don't want to breathe. <laughs> That's what they're saying. It ain't gonna benefit me right now. <laughs> oh man. So the moon, and this is what they say too. They got in the one journal. They say since a full moon, the night is more light lit up, right? So if the more the light, the night is more lit up. From it reflecting this energy off the sun. There's another change that's taking place. That means that there's more energy in the atmosphere. That's not hard to figure out. When there's a full moon, there's more energy in the atmosphere at night. 
So if you're a person that's in the know, you can take advantage of that. You can really take advantage. Now, how would you take advantage of it? Now, first of all, you live in an electromagnetic universe, and your thoughts are electrical. They can be measured. They can be measured just like radio waves. We're not making this up. Right on the computer screen. Here's their thoughts right there on the EKG machine or whatever they use. So now, our thoughts is very powerful. The way you think, because your thoughts is creating your reality. So first of all, you want to start thinking positive. And anything you want to train yourself to, or just don't try to think at all. Or Now you can't think at all, but don't get those negative thoughts no power. That's why in meditation, it trains you at least. Thoughts is just energy moving. They're a vehicle you can use. They're not you. But just because, like the old folks used to say, just because a bird is flying over your head don't mean you have to let them build a nest there. <laughs> That's what they say. So meditation trains you to observe your thoughts. Just let them pass by. You ain't got to give them no juice. Some people got big nests, got all the birds up in there. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Just bad luck again. Hard luck people. So that's number one. Once you know these cycles is coming along, start thinking positive. Ding. Now this is what it says too. Listen at the power of the full moon. Now which one is this? Oh man. Now here's the magnetic effect. Read that real quick. Moon's magnetic effect is not affecting a physical movement of water in our bodies. Now, this is what the scientific field say. Now, read that. Accor yeah, according to science. According to science, is not really moving the physical water of the body. That's basically what they're saying. Okay, but listen at this. But heightened emotions due to... So that shows you they contradict. That's the tree of good and evil. Now, now what they say... It heightened them, but it, what, deals with emotions. You probably can't read my writing. <laughs> yeah, due to the uh, additional brightness to the sky, you may find yourself anxious or emotionally upset. Now listen at that. See, that's the tree of good and evil. That's a person. One minute they're saying that the full moon does not show that it affects you physically. But the next thing they say is that due to the brightness of the sky at night, basically, mm -hmm. it will mess with your emotions. It can make you anxious. Ain't that what they're saying? But see, we in the, in the know, know that every change that happens on the physical body affects the mind, and anything that affects the mind affects the physical body because they're one. So they learn. We might as well go say it. What you mean it don't affect, if it affects the tides out in the ocean, and, it's, and then one minute they say it makes you anxious, that means that something was moving. See, we got to, that's the tree of good and evil. They lying. Right. The Indians say they talk with a, what? Uh, uh, forked tongue. A forked tongue. That's the tree of good and evil. Telling you one thing, but lying on another. And I'm just straight telling you the truth. Yep. The moon going to be out. The sky going to be lit up. You made a mostly water. If it affects the water there, it's going to affect you. And it's going to affect your thoughts. Because all of you is one. Why wouldn't it? That's the breath in journey. Uh-oh. Now, keep reading. Melatonin is a hormone that is naturally made in the pineal gland. Sleep, sleep slash wake cycles of our circadian... Uh, now you talk about the melatonin, yeah. which is important. Now go back to that other paper I gave you. So that's all of that one, mm -hmm. or that first one. First one, yeah. Yeah, we gotta go ahead and eat that up real quick. Because if you don't know what the moon is doing for you, or these other cycles, you can ignore them, and it could cause your health great harm. So it's just like I gotta do a class on grounding one day, just making that contact with the earth. Mm -hmm. That's affecting people's health. They don't even know it. Driving a car all day, the rubber tires is what? That's an insulator. It blocks electricity from coming up in the body. Wearing rubber shoes all the time. No connection to the earth can make you sick. So there's things like that we got to talk about. 
But that's the breakthrough journey, or you won't see it. Or it ain't going to come out right. All right, let's go. Full moon. Heighten the activity of the mind, amplifying conscious thought, as well as pulling subconscious one to the surface, slash conscious mind. Whoa, now listen at this. This is what a full moon does. Now this is, see, see how the fork tongue is talking? Now look what they say again. Read it one more time. Full moon. Heighten the activity of the mind, amplifying... So it heightens the activity of the mind. Now on that one, that last thing they said, it causes anxiety and messes with your emotions. So now they're telling the truth again. So that means it, it heightens the activity of the mind. Amplifying conscious thoughts. And it amplifies comp conscious thoughts. It's sort of, if you got a radio, right? If you put an amplifier on it, it's going to make it increase. That's what the full moon does. All right, let's go. As well as pulling subconscious. Listen at this. As well as pulling subconscious. To the surface. To the surface. What's the subconscious? The physical body. This is the consciousness. That's, that's where they get everybody at. See how the fork tongue talk? They'll tell you that this is consciousness. You know that most people point to their brain and their mind. But sub means below. That means it's below something. What's below your mind? Or the brain? The body. It ain't spooky. That's why these what? People now that's out there telling you about how to manifest things. And they tell you your subconscious is what manifests your reality. It's coming off of your body. That's why you had good success on what you're doing right now. You've been working on your body since you've been here. And when you got on the phone today, all these blessings was coming. You was clearing up the, free, the physical body. That's it. This is all one. This is all one. When you free up the blockages, you are wealthy. Anything you put your mind to, you'll get it. And didn't they say... That the moon, the full moon, will heighten up or amplify your thoughts. And it will bring to the surface. What is your uh, subconscious? Uh, subconscious to surface, surface slash conscious mind. It will bring things to the surface. So that's why Buddha was talking about under the Bodhi tree. As he was sitting there meditating, thoughts was coming to the surface. We could call that vision. What's that called? This passion on meditation. Hmm. Now, why does that work? Energy loves to move. Everything, every experience you had is stuck in your subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. Don't they tell y'all that? But you ain't know what the subconscious was. Every experience you had, let's let's translate. It's stuck in your physical body. Mm -hmm. They say it's stuck in your DNA. That's what they like to say. That's what they like to say now. You say I ain't playing with words, but it's all one. This is your DNA. <laughs> this is where all the information is at. Your physical body remember your grandmother from 10,000 years ago because you got her nose on your face. <laughs> you don't know. Your body does. It knows all the information. So every experience we had is stuck in the subconscious, which is the physical body. But they just said that the full moon will bring things to the surface of the physical body. This is the right time to cleanse yourself. Oh, man, did we say that? This is the right time to release stuff. Mm. This is the right time to heal. Because if you don't, light ain't gonna, more light ain't going to come to the body. So you ain't going to become a breatharian. You ain't going to feed off the air. Because a thought or a trauma blocks light. Is that why people get sick because it's getting pushed out? What's that? Is that why people get colds and all that sickness because they're getting pushed out? It's getting pushed out, right? It's getting pulled out. It's getting pulled out of them. It's coming to the surface. Because energy loves to move. See, your body always seeks the constitution of health. Even if it had to go through a sickness first. Those are called what? Uh, what, you, what you call those uh, sickness pains or whatever? Or how should we say? Detox symptoms. Detox, healing reactions. Healing reactions. Healing yeah. crisis. Healing, healing crisis. crisis. Because it's coming to the surface. But this is the right time to release stuff. During a full moon. So hopefully when we go into 2020, 
you will start taking advantage of the full moon. You're going to have 13 of them. <laughs> you got 13 times throughout the year to release stuff. That's the breath they're in path. You should be happy when the full moon come up. I get to clean myself now. I just got in an argument with my mother. <laughs> now I can release it. Yeah. I just got in an argument with my sister. Or my Right, you can release it. You know the right times and cycles when to do it. Because it's automatically going to come to the surface. Whoa. But if you don't know that knowledge, the negative will come out of it. That's why a lot of people in the medical and all this other stuff getting hurt. Negative thoughts. Because all that's coming to the surface. They also don't know how to handle it. It's going to come to the surface, but that's your time to release it. And understand why it's coming to the surface. So that's why this time period dealing with the full moon is so important dealing with the feminine energy. Mm -hmm. See, the feminine is actually, oh man, listen at this now. Now they tell us through the story of Shiva and Shakti. Shakti is the feminine energy. She's always trying to seek her lover. She's coming from below, trying to rise upwards. Her lover is coming from above, coming downwards. Shiva and Shakti. But she keep going through a maze because energy love to move upwards, right? She keep getting blocked through blockages in a maze. And then she'll try to find another route. Now, what is that symbolic of? We're setting up blockages through our lifestyle. You got to help her out so she can get back to the top to meet her lover. That's the marriage that takes place inside of you. That's the marriage of the male and female connection that takes place inside of you. That's where you become whole. That's where you become self-sustaining. This isn't far-fetched. But you got to understand what's taking place. If you don't, you'll keep suppressing yourself and keep suppressing the knowledge. you got to get out of your own way. Does this make sense? Whoa! This is good, ain't it? See, it's good to talk about things like that. This is knowledge. Knowledge is knowing things, and wisdom is when you start applying what you know. And then the understanding or understanding, when the next full moon come out, you understand or understand why you're going out to the full moon to have your ritual. Everybody else be talking, looking at you like you foolish. You be like, uh-uh, the full moon is coming out. I got something to do this weekend. I got to go meet the Lord. That's what you're saying. <laughs> your lifestyle, you ain't doing what everybody else is doing. You go in another direction to take advantage of your birthright. Whoa. So you could go get paid. Because one who is free is economically rich. Now where that word economics come from? Listen at that. Economics. It comes from the ECO. The ecosystem. Did I say that? That's why they say a person... This rich is different than a person that's wealthy. A person that's rich could go broke. There's many lottery losers. They once had money, they lost it all. But why does a wealthy family always stay wealthy? Well, first of all, they're at the top, top of the pyramid. You're under a pyramid scheme right now. <laughs> Whoa, we might as well go ahead and say it. But health and wealth goes hand in hand. No ins-betweens about it. When you are healthy, you should be prosperous. That's how you know. Because you're hooked up with the ecosystem. That's what gives you life. And you can magnetize. Now listen at this. Don't we think they say we are electromagnetic beings? Or we got an electromagnetic field around us? Look at that word magnetism. You have strong magnetism. When you start dealing with that moon and get rid of blockages, that's why they show you stuff on the tarot cards. The Joker. You ever see the sun and the moon up there? They'll show you the what? The wizard. Or the magician. You got the sun and the moon there. They're showing you that for a reason. They must go hand in hand. Even the Muslims got the star with the crescent moon with it. They must go hand in hand. The male and female energy. You can't get away with it. You can't get from it. So if the electricity is strong, the magnetism is strong. If the magnetism is strong, the electricity is strong. So you should be able to get anything you want. That's where it's at. So all you got to do is when you focus on the breatharian journey, it's not far-fetched. All you got to do is keep focusing on health. 
And the better you feel health-wise, food will break itself off later. You know why? Because you'll eat something one day, even though it might taste good, and you don't feel the same no more. I feel better when I was like that. That's what get rid of it. It feels unhealthy. It's too, he it's too heavy. That's what happened. By your nature. Oh, man. This is good, ain't it? Now we're going to do something real good. We're going to take advantage of the full moon. <laughs> we're going to straight take advantage of it. <laughs> and we're going to do a meditation. But not only that, since we know automatically that certain things can surface or we can release and get rid of it, that's what we're going to do so we can bring more light into the body. Y'all ready for this? Oh, man. So everybody get in a comfortable position. We're about to do a nice meditation. Make sure your spine is straight up and down, but make sure you're comfortable. Nice and relaxed. And like I said, that forces is already working in our favor. As soon as you relax the body, the energy starts to flow. That's why sleep at night is called unconscious meditation. Everybody know how to meditate if you sleep. So make sure you're nice and relaxed. Now take your hands, like in a ball, like you're making a ball, but rest them on your thighs. And just rest in that position. And just relax the whole body. You can slightly close your eyes. Breathe naturally. Relax your shoulders. Take a deep breath in. Hold. Deep breath out. Hold. Deep breath in. Hold. Deep breath out. Just keep breathing naturally. Just relax. Relax the abdomen. Relax your hips. Relax the whole body. Just allow the energy to flow. All that magnetic power. The more you relax the body, the easier the energy flows. This is the Gemini full moon, dealing with the air principle. Now take your mind and feel your whole body. Feel your feet, feel your legs, feel your shoulders, feel your face with your mind. Your whole body is under your command. Just breathe naturally and just relax. Now slowly rub the hands together and make a nice ball in front of you. We got all of these forces that's around us. Take advantage of these forces. With your mind and your intent, make a nice electromagnetic ball. Now, right now, since the energies is in our favor, anybody you've been getting into it with, any resentment, just go ahead and picture that person inside the ball. A loved one who had passed away, put them inside the ball, it still pains you. Any event that still hurts you, put it inside the ball. Anything that comes to the surface in your mind that you feel is holding you back, put it inside the ball. Feel that energy as we use our power. This is dealing with release. And it's worth it to release this because when you release these things, it'll bring more light into the body.
Some things will come up quicker than others. Just go ahead and keep making the ball and think about all the things you want to release. Just place it into the ball. Anything you want to create in the future and you feel things are blocking it, put it inside the ball. You can make the ball bigger or smaller. Move your hands back and forth as you play with the ball. Feel the energy. The mother goddess, she knows how to comfort us and release these things that we're dealing with. Feel that energy. Now on the count of three, we're going to lift this up into the universe so that energies can transmute themselves. Once we release them, they're from us forever. So on the count of three, we're going to lift it up to the universe. Three, two, one. Up, up, and away. We're electrical beings, so we work on things on an electrical level. We allow the energies to transmute themselves. Right now, you should feel a lot more lighter. And just keep your hands up in the air. And just relax. Feel the energy in the hands. Relax the shoulders. Any tension in the body, just relax. universe is user friendly. This is the last full moon of the year. We made it. One more minute in this position. Just feel that energy flow. All these cosmic forces. The mother goddess is cleansing our bodies, cleansing our minds. Breaking up blockages. Healing our bodies. Nourishing our cells. Strengthening our muscles. slowly put the hands in the prayer position make that energetic connection with the organs just relax relax into the energy relax the shoulders relax the crown chakra as the energy the prana is going through our spinal cord going through the body your hips, allow them to sit down into the earth. You can see your cells getting stronger, getting more energy within the cells of the body, becoming whole. Feel that power. Now slowly take your hands and rub them together, all this energy we collected. And give yourself a nice energy shower. This is good for the skin, because your skin is the largest organ. 
This is how you start utilizing these forces. And take it seriously. Even, this is why they're called subtle energies. That means the average person don't pay, pay attention to it. But this is what's taking place. Whew. This is awesome. Any questions? <laughs> well, she over there happy. She's been prosperous all day. <laughs> well, once again, thank you.